We are back for another topic uh, when it comes to Express applications. Uh, in this lecture, we will talk about persistent data in, mm. in our applications. Um, the last time we met, we spoke uh, a little bit about creating your first uh, Express application using the model, uh, the, the controller and the view. Yep. And today we will add the um, uh, the model to, to this mix. Uh, so uh, we have spoken a little bit about the entire architecture, and we will continue that uh, today. Uh, we looked at Express, we looked at the routes, the controller, uh, and the view, and we made a skeleton application as a demo mm. uh, for that lecture. So, so, and we will continue to work. Yeah, we will continue to work on. Maybe not that exact exam example, but 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 on the same architecture. So if you haven't watched the first lecture called Web Application Architecture, please do before this lecture. Mm. Um, that is a prerequisite. Um, so what will we do today? We will talk about persistent data. Uh, and um, we will, I mean, there are many ways of storing data on the, yeah. on the server. Uh, we will uh, take one approach in this course. Uh, it's not a course about database handling or database theory. It's just when you when you are creating web applications on the server, you will need a way of storing data, and we will show one of those ways. Uh, we will use MongoDB, that is a document database, mm -hmm. uh, and we will use a. a, a, a Helper Ooh. library, yeah, okay. uh, or it's it's called a s Ooh, ODM. ODM, uh, I yeah, think. not yes. a RDM, in, an ODM, an object document mapper, something like that. Something like that. Yeah, we will see. We will have that on the slide. Uh, we will. Uh, Maybe in this or a separate recording, also talk about uh, how to create a web session, being able to like um, recognize in the client when the client makes multiple requests. We want to know who is this client. Uh, this is basically the base for being able to create uh, an authentication uh, and authorization uh, uh, environment, logging in on, on, on your mm. uh, applications. Uh, let's start with uh, an overview of the N-tier architecture that we discussed last time. Uh, the last time the model and the database was crossed over, uh, and today it's time to start discussing those two uh, things. Uh, so why do we need to store data? Well, that is probably pretty obvious, I guess. I mean, if you are uh, making an e-commerce site or something like that, you will probably need to store the products and you need to store the orders and uh, things like that um, uh, in, in, a, in a some kind of, of uh, environment and, and the database is probably the, the right way to go. Uh, maybe some of you have read a course in database uh, management already. Some of you may have, some of you may have not done that. It doesn't matter for this course, we will not go into detail about different kinds of, of, of uh, database handlers. We will talk a little bit about that, but not, not that much. Uh, you can see the flow in front of you uh, for the application. Last time we said that, okay, the client is making a request. We handled the routes. We looked at many different ways of handling the routes and, and we made a, a skeleton application with what we think is a good way of handling yeah. the routes. Uh, might not be the optimal in every case, but, but, but the solution we showed last time is kind of the architecture is made a certain way so that if you change to another environment, another uh, like C -sharp and .NET applications mm. that you are used to, you will probably feel quite familiar with yeah. that skeleton application. Um, and we said that, okay, let's not do too much of the program logic in the routes. Let's make the routing just be routing and nothing else. So we moved the logic of the code to the controller. Mm -hmm. uh, we made it so that the controller could prepare some data for the view. We created a view using a, a template engine called handlebars. Um, and 
we sent the response back to the client. Now, of course, I mean, the logic in, in the case we had, we just took some data from the client, a name, we added some time stamp or, or, mm. or a date to, to this data and sent it back to the client just using a, a view. In, in, in most cases, you will probably need something else. You will need to fetch data from a database or maybe store data in the database mm. when doing this, uh, uh, those net, uh, calls from the client. Uh, so we are adding that. So the controller, instead of just preparing the view uh, and sending it to the client, it will now also fetch data uh, using a, a model uh, module uh, and get the data from a database through this module and back to the controller. Mm. And the models encapsulate the data in the database. Yeah. Mm. And uh, the name of routes, controllers, views, models, well, that's the name of the, the folders in our solution yep. as well. And, uh, well, that's the naming convention we choose. Them. Yeah. And, I mean, some, some would probably argue it should be route, controller, model. Yeah. But, I mean, you have the most experience, of, at least of us two, in, in working in different kind of frameworks on different kind of systems. And I guess this is a good way of, 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 of structuring. Uh, we could have a look at the, uh, I will close that one, but just to look at the um, the folder structure. Yes. We have added, I mean, we had controllers, we had public routes of use. Now we added a model yeah. folder and we have added a config folder, but that mm -hmm. is just for, why is it config and not configs? <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, that, it's just one. <laughs> yeah, it's only one config right now. <laughs> well, no. That is just to, to be able to store some some credentials uh, somewhere. Uh, maybe not the best way of storing cred user credentials, but uh, we will, I think, actually talk about that later on in the course when we come to, to uh, well, putting yeah, things into so. production. Yeah. Uh, so let's get back to the presentation. So this is what we will do today, focus on the model. Um, Creating persistent data and working with uh, with models, we often hear the term crude. Uh, well, that's one of them. Yeah, create update, uh, create read, update, delete, uh, and this is probably what you want your web application to do. You want to create something in the model. Model. You want to be able to read from this model. You want to be able to update the model, and you want to be able to delete entities from that model. Mm. Um, and uh, we will look at those four uh, concepts today. I mean, if, if, if you can do one, you can probably, uh, it's pretty easy to do the other. Yeah. Uh, there are many ways, as we said, to store the data in a server-side application. Uh, of course, you can store it in memory uh, on the server. Uh, there are many problems with that. If the power is turned off, the, the server is automatically restarted, that, that data will be gone. Um, it's not persistent. Of course, you can store it on the on the file system uh, in, in some way, but th that will be that will uh, introduce a lot of problems, yeah. especially when when it comes to scaling. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, so so that is probably not not something you would like to do uh, with with user data at least. Um, we could store it in a local database. Mm -hmm. um, that is That's a database on the same. Server, or, server it, or at or least in the same, same. environment yeah. as the server. They will probably be on different servers, however, if they are on the same like network or environment, they, we, we can say that it's kind of local. Uh, many of you have probably looked at relationship, re, re, what's it called in, in Swedish? In English, relationship, re, relation, relational databases. Relational database management systems. Real, yeah, yeah. As he said, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like Oracle, uh, SQL Server, MySQL, MariaDB, PostgreSQL, uh, and in so SQL, on. and <laughs> so on and so on. There are a lot, um, and we also have document databases and graph databases as well. But we will choose a document database mm -hmm. in this one. It's it's a pretty simple way of storing data. 
without needing to do a lot of com configuration on the database side. Uh, uh, do you know JSON, sir? Yeah, exactly. If, 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 if you're familiar with JSON, it's a really simple way of just storing that JSON data in the, in, in the database as, as documents. Uh, we will show you that. Uh, this course is not about database management, as I said, so we are just using this to be able to store our data. Um, cloud persistence, uh, of course, we can save the data in the cloud. Uh, it's even easier, you don't need uh, to store that data locally, you don't need to manage the database server at all. Uh, there are many services in, in this case as well. Firebase is, is it called Google Cloud here, maybe? Well, Firebase is, is, is a Google product, uh, we, we can store it on Amazon. Uh, Microsoft, all, all the big big giants in this area, of course, have, have uh, the possibility to store data uh, in their cloud services. Uh, we will actually do 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 kind of uh, that in this course. Yes, um, you are. We will see. Yeah, <laughs> you you will be allowed to store it locally, but uh, we will probably use the cloud. Uh, so this is the the stack. Of course, we are using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript on the client still. Uh, we are using Express on the server side uh, in the node, uh, and now we are adding the database layer as well, and we will be using MongoDB. Yeah. Uh, why is it called Mongo? It's humongous database, something like that, right? Yes. Do we have a slide on that? No, yeah. we don't. We, we have. Okay, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> um, so, uh, relational database management systems, uh, they, that, that is what I learned when I was a student uh, back in the days. Yeah. Uh, it's a really neat way of organizing data. It's really structured. Mm -hmm. um, you got a special language, Yeah, SQL. S the SQL language. You tend to be, you need, it, in my view at least, you need to, to think about the organization of the data in, in, in advance. It, it's really That's good if you yeah. have like, this picture of all the data you need to store and you, and you kind of model that whole application and then you start working and and, and it's a little bit harder to make changes definitely um, yeah. yeah and that is probably an advantage which the no sql database types like document databases for instance that it's at least on the database side it's easier to handle changes then then you will probably need to to, to handle those changes more on the logical side of yeah. things but so i mean the problem doesn't go away it's just <laughs> another way of solving the problem um you organize your data into documents and as we said it, you will be familiar with the with the structure of those documents because it's json uh, there are many Databases like MongoDB and Firebase. Okay, so Firebase is, uh, is the implementation in Google mm. Cloud for, for document databases. Uh, there are graph databases. I, I, that is like a, 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 a shameful white spot for me. I haven't dived into graph databases yet. I, I probably should. Yes, you should. Yeah, have you? Read about it. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. yeah quite interesting. Uh, if you look at the uh, different kind of APIs, that is that that's common to, to use for, for example, uh, GitHub mm. is using but, a graph database. Yes, okay. some kind of. Yeah. Mm. So 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 the database in itself produces more or less an API, or you can use yeah. a query language, yes, uh, like an API directly to the database. That is out of the scope of this course. Uh, key value databases, um, you have probably used one of those at least on the um, um, on the client course. I mean, you can see local storage as a simple mm. key value database, uh, even if it's 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 not a probably not considered a database. But well, um, so let's dive into the, this eco ecosystem. Uh, I mean, it's not a course about MongoDB. Nope. We will not like question you on all uh, the API calls you can do in, on a MongoDB uh, database and things like that. We're just you. <laughs> I got afraid that was really loud. Uh, uh, we are probably, uh, we will handle this just, just as a way of storing data. Uh, it's an open MongoDB, it's an open uh, document-based database system. MongoDB derives from the word 
humongous. Yeah. I was right. <laughs> Uh, and that was uh, due to the ability to scale uh, with ease and handle a lot of data. Mm. Um, that is also one drawback with a SQL Server database. If you have a lot of data, it could tend to get slow if you're not, you yeah. know what you're doing. The document database uh, is quite fast when you read data. Yeah. Uh, we store it in a flexible JSON-like documents, uh, uh, and it's pretty simple to use and that's why we are starting off with that. Um, as I said, we will not uh, install, I mean, you're allowed to, but you don't need to install MongoDB on your develop development environment and run it locally. Uh, we will use a service called MongoDB Atlas, it uh, was called MongoLab before. Or MLab. MLab actually, mm -hmm. uh, before. Now it's renamed itself to MongoDB Atlas. Has it something to do with Microsoft? Nope. Nope. Isn't nope. Atlas like I, I, when I heard yeah, well, Atlas, I, I, I think I, of Microsoft. But well, well it's, it's an old Microsoft project. Yes. Ah, okay, that's why. Uh, uh, it's really easy to get started with. It, it should be, but I haven't tried yet. <laughs> yeah. So actually, we will. We will see. <laughs> we will see how easy it is because I will try to, to do this live. Uh, so we will head to uh, MongoDB and. Just create an account and see see how the process is. Mm -hmm. uh, to be able to, to work against this to, to, to help us so that we don't need to to, to work. Uh, we want to need an intermediate between Express and the database, yeah. and mm -hmm. we will. Uh, they are called uh, called object document mappers, I think, right? Well, it, it says, says object oh. data modeling. Oh. Yeah. I thought it was Mapper, but okay. Object Data Modeling, okay, uh, library uh, that we will use uh, uh, that will help us, I mean, bridge the gap between the objects that we have in Express mm -hmm. and the objects we will store in the database. Uh, it's, a, it's a simple install. Install Mongoose as a library. Uh, make sure that you have this one in the dev dependencies, uh, uh, in the production dependencies, yes. not in the dev dependencies, because you will need this in production, of course. So, and you will need to read the documentation to be able to use this library. Yep, it's there. But we will probably show show a lot, but, but yes, not, not, not everything. Not everything yes. yep. Uh, let's head over to uh, MongoDB Atlas then. Okay, start free. That's probably what we would like to do. Uh, your work email. Okay. Whoa. And I would like to use... Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> Didn't see that one coming. I'll redo it in a non-private uh -huh. browser because I cannot access my last pass otherwise. That's better. So I'm I'm oh damn it. Don't show it. E. Do you need to show it? I really didn't want it to show that one. Okay, so I will remember to, to just blur this. <laughs> <laughs> I can actually, if I have a hundred characters like that, it will not show them all. So, so that will pretty, probably be good enough. Fill password. Uh, add it to uh, last pass. Okay, I agree. Mm -hmm. Come on. Then I will probably need to verify my email, so I will Whoa. have to. Or do I need to do that? I don't know. Oh. Start clutters free, yes. We want that one, right? Yeah. We, we do not want to be, a, be paying for this, so create a free cluster. Okay. Well, cloud providers. <laughs> mm -hmm. You got to choose one. So we can choose to be using the AWS, the Google Cloud, or Azure. Yeah. So this is just uh, using those services to... Okay, mm -hmm. nice. Why can't we show Stockholm then? Because they haven't... Well, AWS. The, yeah, AWS mm -hmm. doesn't have no. the, uh, 
this one for that one. How, how, which one should we use? I, I, I tend to Europe. use RVS in Europe, so probably Ireland. That's or Frankfurt is closer. <laughs> I don't know. Try that one, Central One. Cluster tier. Uh, oh, I mean uh, M zero. Yeah, it's a free one. Yeah, I guess we can't can't choose anything else without upgrading to a paid plan. Uh, settings. Turn on backup. We don't need any backup nope. right now. At least I guess that will cluster name. Okay. D so what is, what what is a cluster? Is 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 a cluster like a uh, a collection of databases? Yeah. Or is it a database? No, it's it's not a database. It's a collection of, of projects, I would say. Okay. And the project contains databases. Databases. Okay. So I will create that cluster. Mm-hmm. And connect that class, build your first cluster, create your first database user. Try it out. Okay. Uh, click here to manage your project users. Okay, I will add a new oh that's really convenient. Uh, we will probably in this case go with a password. Yeah, introduce a DB user. Yep. Uh, generate secure password. Yeah. Oh, they had like something like show. that. Show. You can show it. Is. Yeah, this one is, is totally fine. I will save that one. Uh, so use privileges, uh, read and write uh, to any database. Yep. Let's try that one. And I should say, it, it, of course, it's, it's not okay to show your password and stream it to yep. the, but I will, of course, remove this user after this demo is, is, is uh, uh, recorded. So that's why. Uh, add user. Yeah. Okay. Created a user with a read write to any database. Okay. So, whitelist white your IP address. What is that? Is it able to do, do, do so that we can access it from this? At current IP address. Hmm. Work. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess when you are pushing to production, you need to remember to, to add the production IP yeah. to this yeah. uh, set of whitelisted IP addresses. Oh, you uh, can skip the next step, load sample, sample data, that's needed. And not connect to... So connect to your cluster. Try that one. Well... Mm -hmm. hmm. So we can try to connect... Yeah. And different ways, but... Uh, connect to your application. Okay, we can use something called a Mongo shell. We don't need that. We can. I don't know what MongoDB Compass is, so we will go with connect your application. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we're using Node.js, of course, 3.0 or later, and here we get a connection string. And that, uh, that's very interesting part. Yeah. yeah. Where you specify DB user and you need to specify the password, as well as if you scroll to the right, uh, it says test. That's that's that will be the name of the database. Okay. And um, we will have to change that one if we want a different name. Mm -hmm. I will copy that. Yeah. And I will actually go into Visual Studio yeah. right away. Yeah. Uh, and I will look look in the config folder because we we created a mongoose JS, and we haven't talked about mongoose yet. We will get to that. Yeah. But mongoose would will need this connection string to be able to connect to the database. Uh, so we are creating a constant called mongo connection string. I will actually replace that one with uh, this one. Yeah, and you need to change the password. Yeah, we need to change from test. What should the database be called? Ooh. Is it like snippets? Nope. Nope. Um, What's the demo application? It's. I think, I think. I think it's called just to do it. Just to do it. To do it like that. Do, or do you want lowercase? Lowercase, please. Just to do it. We need the u uh, the d the user and the user was db, db user. user. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. 
And then we need a password that I copied, but I uh, copied it over. So, so database access. Pass. There is the user. Edit and uh, edit password and show. Yep. Well, that's strange. <laughs> Do okay. I need to set a new one? Well, <laughs> update user. Yep. Let's see if it do the same thing. Yeah, there's no way of hmm. of showing well, it because that that one is new. Yeah, update. Uh, oh well, pasting it in there, and now we have a connection string saved, uh, and we will probably s show what to do with this connection string soon. Hmm. So let's head back to the presentation. Uh, so we have created the MongoDB yep. database, or oh, we haven't created the database yet, but it will cre be created the first time mm -hmm. we connect to the database. Um, uh, you can find guides for this here, just yeah. showing it. So, so we have it in the presentation. Uh, and now we need to start working with the, uh, the connection. And we will use, as we said, the library Mongoose. So we have done an NPN install mm -hmm. on that one. Uh, we have a uh, connect method on, on that one. We can look at that. Uh, uh, so we're using Mongoose. I have actually not done a, uh, let's see in the package JSON. Uh, it says use Mongoose. So, mm -hmm. so it's in this pack demo package JSON. So we will do an MPNI just to install those dependencies. And because I haven't already, there are actually some kind of problems with some kind of dependencies. Mm. Uh, you well, wanted this to happen the last time, but yeah, it didn't it actually. Did. I think it's uh, the expression HBS. Uh, uh, I think one. it should say 2.3 yeah. instead of 2.2. But we can then we can show this MPN. I mean, it says uh, mm. that we can use MPN audit. Um, fix. So I mean, as long as we are just developing in this manner, it doesn't really matter with the versions. If you are doing this in production, you will probably need to read up. Okay, what has changed? Mm -hmm. uh, will our application still work when we upgrade a version of of the modules? But but in this case, we can do an npm audit fix. Have look at that one. Let's see if Mats was correct. Yeah, it updated to two dot three dot oh instead, and now uh, oh. Now we are probably good to go. Uh, so let's go into the, uh, the configuration once again. Uh, let's skip that one for now. So what are we doing? We are actually inside of this one. We are connecting to the database. Yeah. Uh, this, as it said, returned a promise. Yeah. Uh, if you and haven't read up on promises <laughs> yet, it's, uh, it's time to do that. Mm -hmm. That means that the connect function is a asynchronous function, uh, and uh, uh, well, sorry, this one, uh, the mongoose connect uh, is a uh, no. Which one is it? Uh, Line thirty-five. Uh, thirty-five. There we are. Connect that one. I mean, the mongoose connect method is an asynchronous function. It returns a promise. When we are, have a connection to the database, this promise will resolve. Uh, and because this is a promise, uh, we can await for that promise to, to, to happen inside of an other asynchronous function. So, so the, the, we are creating our own function in this config file called connect. That will, uh, it is an asynchronous function. It will use our connection string to make a connection to the database. Uh, and instead of Doing, I mean, we could do something like, um, um, actually, we could do this if we like, uh, wait mongoose like this, and just wait for the connection and just return undefined. However, since a asynchronous function like connect always returns a promise, we could just as well return the promise that mongoose is is uh, is giving us through the connect uh, function, and that's why it's totally fine to just do a return on that promise. Uh, 
So basically when we are calling connect, we will get a promise back. And when we are connected, we will um, um, be connected to the database. Back, I had the wrong files. So uh, just a quick update of the files. Some things has changed since last year. So, 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 so that's, that's why. Um, doesn't uh, affect what I've said uh, recently, but, but uh, it's the same thing as I said. I mean, connect is returning a, it's an asynchronous function. It returns a promise. Mongoose connect returns a promise. Yeah. Hence, we can return the promise that Mongoose returns. And the new things from last year is uh, use new URL parser, use unified topology and well, yeah, and this I guess is is making it a little bit easier and more convenient yeah. for us when working with this one. So, so you can of course read up in the in in the uh, uh, documentation about mm -hmm. uh, those methods. But we are basically connecting to the database using this one. Okay. Um, uh, we should probably uh, look at. Uh, uh, first off, by, by just starting to show what happens when we connect. I think so. Uh, yeah. So so we need to, and I guess this, this application, I mean, it's already finished, so uh, I will just do an npn start. Yeah. Mongoose connection is open, yes. so it has connected. Where do we do, where do we do that connection? In app. In app.js. So let's look. Okay, so we are creating an express application just as we did before, and with the difference now that we are also connecting to Mongoose, yes. uh, 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 to, to MongoDB. In, in uh, line 17, we require the config file. Uh, yep, that one, and yeah. we do a connect. Since it's a, a promise returned, we can use catch and then. Yeah. You could also listen for then and do something when the database is connected, but we are not interested in that, I guess, because but it logged the Mongoose connection is open. Is that in? Ah, okay. So, so when we have the connection, nope. we have... it's the line twenty-two. Well, the connection yep. on connected. Yep. And we're we're even interested if uh, there are any errors and uh, we'll when when, yep. when we are disconnected from the database and so yep. on. Yep. So we can see that in that one. Great, then we only need to look for errors here and, and, and yeah. just make sure that everything uh, is shut down properly. And we will probably get into mm. this um, in more detail later on. And you can, uh, you can also discuss if, it's, if this is the right way of doing things because uh, we start trying to connect to the, to, to the to Mongoose database and while trying we start up our oh yeah web server yeah so we we, 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 sh we, we maybe should have waited for the yeah. connection to happen but before we, we we continue okay yeah in, in this case I, I, I guess it doesn't matter since since it's only when the first request yeah. comes that we will start working with the database um, however however well of course the request can come as soon as as the server is up and running but um, so let's I guess look here because something should have happened I guess. Uh, maybe. maybe we we have a database. Well, you can have to to look at clusters, and you have collections. Uh, where do you see them? Um, it's a button. Connect oh, metrics collection. collections. Collections. And well, there, there are no no none, but. Uh, so 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 the connection is not creating the database. It's mm -hmm. created the first time it's used. Or? Uh, written to. Written to, okay, yeah. Uh, let's try that, since this is a working application, uh, should we just uh, go through what happens uh, with the first route, with the get? Uh, well, you can show first, and then we can look at the code. So demonstrate the application. Okay, so, we'll start in that end. Uh, then I need to do like that. I need to go to localhost, was it 3000? I don't remember. I think so. Yep. And this one is called Just Do It. A simple well, to do. Just to, 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 to do it. Yes. Simple to do application. Uh, I have a home, I have a list, I have a create. Yeah. Uh, if I do a list, 
it failed to look up to do index since there is no database. <laughs> but <laughs> oh, you're an unhandled error, I guess. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To do create in views, failed to look up view. Hmm. Let's see why. Mm -hmm. We get to the com. This one works still, so it's the to do router that is problematic. Create, uh, controller create, controller create post. And so it's to do, control, to do controller create, view data to do slash create. And it's called to do. Is it something with that you are on a Windows system maybe? I think so. Oops. Well, I don't ah. think so. What? You don't? Because, I mean, that will show the folder, right? And the folder is named to do. Windows will uh, mm. accept that, uh, Linux will not. Uh, ah. I, I, I'm pretty sure we could try it. But. But. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but that's really pedagogical because I mean, well, this, it was my intention. Yeah, <laughs> it happens a lot since 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 I mean, Windows doesn't care if you write capital or uh, lowercase uh, letters in 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 folder structures and file names. However, Linux and Mac is pretty neat about it. Must be uh, the same signature. So I will try to to change this uh, to do. How do we have any more? Done a search and replace, of course, but let's do it the old fashioned way. Let's see, the model is called to do items, right? So we don't have, yeah, that, that will work. So saving, uh, restart, or do I have no demon installed? Oh, I did I no, you not how, how did you start? Uh, with npn start. Well, let's see. You, NPN. you need to use ah, dev start. Dev start, of course. Uh, npn run dev start. Now we have uh, reloading as well. So let's try it out. Reload the application, go to list. Well, it works. So, so what did you change? Only changed from a capital D to a lowercase d, since that folder is. But. Ah. I'm looking at the Windows machine and actually the folder is a capitalized D, however in my folder structure it's not. Uh -huh. So I could have changed the folder to be called to do instead. Yes. On, on, on the Windows machine, just to show it, it, it was like this. But let's change it back since it will not work now. What does it say? We will update that example as well, so that you will... But it should be... Well, probably it's something with Git and, and renaming folders uh, take a look on at Windows, Gita. I think. Well, now we have a connection to the da database. It's, or, well, in this case, we're just handling that there are no items. We're just describing no to-do items to add. I will go to create. And I will create a new to do item. Uh, change hey. from oh, GitHub. Yeah, it's yeah. And 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 uh, if we look at GitHub, it, it's lowercase. And I think that it's because you have somewhere in in the history of this file, you have changed from to do with a lowercase to uppercase. And and since you are on Windows, Git on Windows doesn't care. <laughs> and mm. and then we get a mismatch. I, that has happened before. Convert from to do to <laughs> to do. do okay so that's the, the 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 thing we need to do okay and i saved that one the to do items was uh, created successfully now i guess if we go back sorry how do i change oh, i don't remember damn it go back to to mongoose uh, uh, or the mongo atlas uh, and we reload this page page i guess uh, or click refresh. 
<laughs> that was a refresh <laughs> button. Okay. Then now we have it just to do it database. Yes. Uh, and we have to do items, and that is because we have specified that we want to well, do items in that's that database. That's part of the database. It's called a collection. Yeah. Okay. So we have a collection called to do items. If we look in this one, we have one document. Uh, is this the worst, best way of looking? Or can we do it like that? No. Uh, we see that document and it looks like this. Could we see it in like a raw format or something? I don't know. Because this looks kind of like... Uh, uh, what is that one doing? Clone document, copy document, if we edit it. No? Okay. It looks like that. Fine. I thought it was more of a JSON. It is. Fight. Yeah, <laughs> I think it is, right? So this is some kind of view that is used. It's really not stored in this way. It's it's more like with the brackets and and and, and saved as a JSON document. But it's there. Yeah. And we got some timestamps and things like that to show that this was created and well, it wasn't updated, but it says it's the same yeah. timestamp for updated. Why do we need this? <laughs> we don't. No, may maybe not, but, 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 but somewhere could. down the line when handling conflicts and things like that, I mm -hmm. guess we could, could, could make use of, of knowing a timestamp of when this document was created. It also has a unique ID, internal ID for this uh, uh, post. Yeah, or and a version number. Yep. If we updating yeah then we could like well, differentiate it, it, uh, well it, it has questions. to do with concursive conflicts and so on yep but uh, we won't we will not discuss that yep. in this course should we look at how how how, how we does this in code like creating that post well, why? we have already started to following the route uh, so if we look at the to-do router uh, we are just telling that okay we have a uh, slash create, we have an edit, delete, and we will start with create. Uh, and the create can handle gets and posts. Why should a create be able to handle gets? Well, we need a form. Yeah. Um, so that is the, the, the first one. Uh, and uh, then when we uh, enter the data into the form, we will get to the post route. And yep. the post route is probably the one that is interesting in this example. We talked about the other ones last time. So let's go into the to-do controller. Uh, we will find the uh, create post in this case. Mm -hmm. I will not close it, but I can do it like that. Uh, create post. Um, we have made this asynchronous. And that is, I guess, because uh, the save method, all methods that we do against mongoose is asynchronous yeah. uh, uh, and that is why this one create post needs to be asynchronous as well uh, here we are trying to create a new to-do item yeah. we are just creating a, a model that is to-do item can we find that in model maybe uh, it's this one uh, uh, and in we haven't stopped st talking about schemas yet so so maybe I should uh, look at okay well because everything starts with a schema yeah <laughs> and this is the first time I'm having this lecture that's <laughs> why I'm not really used to to what to do in which order uh, everything starts with a schema what is a schema it describes the data more mm -hmm. or less yeah um, if we look at this one it's probably pretty obvious what it does we, we need a new schema, uh, it, we want to save a name and in this case a size. Uh, uh, this is probably not the, the example we are looking at, nope. so in <laughs> our is. case it's, it's a to-do or something like yeah. that. But this is a, a shoe shoe model or something like yeah. that to, to, to save <laughs> shoes. Yeah. Um, and the shoe needs, in, needs a name and a size. Yeah. And, and we, a orientation, like, <laughs> like <laughs> right or left. But oh well. Well, uh, yeah. So the type is a string. Yeah. Uh, the types we we can use here, I guess, is the same as in JSON. String number, boolean. boolean yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, object. Date. Date. Okay. Yeah, that's a date mm. as well. And it is required. 
Yeah. Uh, you need yeah you need to specify the type for each and every uh, uh, everything you uh, every property you add to the schema. Mm. Uh, is this one required when you create a document? Yes, we need to to specify this. We also need to specify a size. Mm. Yes, between fifteen and forty seven. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so we can specify that here, and and the validation for this will be handled by Mungus. Yes. Mm. So we don't need to do a lot of if statements to, to try this ourselves. Uh, from the schema, we can create the model. That is how I yeah I, I, I think of it uh, anyway. So okay, so we use the the shoe sh uh, schema to create the model named shoe. Yes. Uh, More or less a JavaScript class. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then we could instantiate. Yeah, it is because you can instantiate from that one uh, to to create the model. And this will create a, a collection on the database named shoes. Ah, oh, it will. Yeah. Mm. Uh, let's look at this example just to show it. Uh, we we add this into the model. We call it to do item. Uh, we create our schema. Mm. Uh, we are. We want a description for our to-do item. Yeah. Uh, it's a string. It's required. What is trim? Uh, remove white we, spaces. Uh, remove white spaces, starting and ending white yep. spaces. Yeah. Uh, a minimum length of one. Maybe on a description you should have like three or four. I don't. I don't know. But but at least you need mm. to write a character in this case. Done. I guess is uh, if we look at the application, uh, we can. Remember the shortcut for that one. Uh, we can uh, like uh, mark this as done. Yes, if you edit. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, we can do that. I can mark it as done. Uh, we can of course change it. Uh, we can remove it, but yeah. we can mark it as done on our to-do list. And this is it's this one. It's a boolean. It's required, and it's the false false. Yes. Default false. And we want timestamps. And, and this is pretty new because we didn't do this last year, I think. Well, nope. Mm. Uh, and, and when doing this timestamps true, it will add updated and created. And created at and updated yep. at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, uh, that is basically our schema. And then we create the to do item uh, out of this schema. As we said, use the model to do uh, its name to do item. We get a class. We can, in this case, just export that yeah. class and we will do a new to-do item mm -hmm. in the controller. Right? And if we look in the, in the database, we will see the name of the collection. Uh, in this one. Oh, back again. Do, do, do. And it says to-do items. Ah, yeah. So the collection represents the model with an S. Yeah. 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 Uh, back to the controller. Uh, in this way, we created the new uh, to do item, we're adding a configuration object, and that is uh, basically the, the, the schema uh, that we uh, said that was um, required. Uh, and this is a, well, a special way to, to, to initiate the object. Uh, by sending, sending the configuration to yeah. the, do the, uh, the constructor. Mm. But that is how, how you do it, I guess. That's yes. defined by the Mongoose uh, yes. uh, it's, library. It, it, it's not anything in JavaScript default. No. Uh, done was requ was done required in the in the in the schema. It's yeah, it was the required. That's why we need to to, 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 to send that one. Uh, uh, and so we create that uh, that to do item, and we try because if something is wrong, mm -hmm. things can go wrong. We can catch the error and show an um, error message yep. for the user. But more on that later on. Um, then we need to save this new to do item that we have created, and we use the save method. Um, using that uh, uh, that save method uh, is also a uh, promisified mm -hmm. or a synchronous function, so we need to await it. Uh, and that's why the create post is uh, async as well. Uh, when this is done, we will just show a uh, successful message for the user, and we will redirect the user to this same. Yeah, and uh, more on that later on. Yeah. Um, so 
this this line is the, is the <laughs> or those lines are the interesting ones mm -hmm. right now. Um, uh, yeah, this is just a, what we did. We created mm -hmm. a schema, we created a model out of that schema, uh, and we have now created and used the C in the crude application uh, to create well, this instance. if we want to read anything then. Uh, if we want to read anything, we need to go to the R in crude uh, for, for, for that. Uh, then we use find. We are actually trying to find a document in the collection. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and by find, uh, by selling an, an empty object, we will get all items in the collection. Mm. And maybe uh, we need to do something about this later on. If we were to have a thousand objects in yeah. that one, we would need to add some kind of paging and, and things yes. like that. But but in this case, we are just saying that we want to get all objects in the to-do item list, and we are actually mapping. Why are we mapping when well, we're getting the objects back? It, well, we, 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 don't, we don't want to send the raw data from the database to the view, so instead of that we transform the documents uh, to anonymous objects. Mm. Um, and I mean, in this case, we probably might as well have, have, would be able to just send the data to the yes. view, because we don't have probably, I mean, we we are presenting it with the ID, we are presenting it with the description and well, done. I, I will say we, you should always do this. Yeah, I, I'm, I'll get to that because, okay. I mean, in this case, we would only add like created and updated the dates yes. and, and maybe that's not all the whole, whole, whole world if we would like, if we would do that. However, in many cases, there are data that shouldn't ever be, be presented Yep. to the client and then we should not uh, even take the risk to send that to the view. It's, it's unnecessary, so, it's a, so a good habit is to always map out what you need from the model uh, when you, you send this and prepare it as view data. Um, yeah, it basically says that. Uh, we could actually have a look in the uh, uh, in that one as well. So we have the to controller. We have this one. In that case, we are finding one specific one. Do we have a get all? It's actually on well index. Uh, if you go up, that one. Nope. No, that one and up. Yep. Oh yeah, there it is. Um, finding everything, mapping out what we need, rendering the view to do index, and this is the one that is presenting all of the yes. uh, to-do items. Uh, going to the view uh, to do index. Um, now we are working a little bit more with the uh, template engine and viewing uh, for each. So for each to-do item that we get in our view data, we will show a post uh, or a, a row in a, uh, in, in a table. Uh, perfect, good use of using a table when it comes to listing table data. Uh, and then we're just getting, I mean, things, testing if it's done, then show this, add a description, things like that. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, pretty standard stuff in that way. Uh, update. N not really much to say, it's, it's kind of, I guess, like, um, I mean, well, we, we, need, we need to post well, to this controller, yeah. and yeah, and in the controller, we are saying that we need to update a certain yeah. document. And, and the most interesting part, I think, is uh, done because we prepare the data. We mm. want a true value. We want we we will not. We don't want to send on to the view mm. because we want we would have to handle. The string on it view it's much much better to to send true or false i think mm. yeah uh, yeah because i mean it's it's yeah we're basically testing what it says in the form yeah and and if it's on then it will be true otherwise false uh, and then we update uh, this one by by calling update one and it's the same thing in this case we will not get the result until uh, uh, the promise resolves and you can look at that in the example as well. Uh, delete, pretty, much. pretty simple. We need the ID, of course. 
so this ID will be, um, we didn't say that before, we can look in the view actually. If we, oh, hold on, it's the wrong way around. If we look in a, um, um, yeah, the index view, for instance, uh, you have the delete in this case, and we are telling that if we click the delete button, we will send this to uh, the route to do slash delete slash the ID of this. Yes, um, and this will be a get. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. Because you should never, never, ever delete anything from a database with a get. You need to post, so yeah. we need to, to show a, a form to the user to mm. start with. Should we try it? How it looks? Click that one, and then I oh, delete. Do I need to? Uh, why is that one show? Oh, it's probably that is the done right. Yeah, yeah. it's it's a simple Maybe. example. Then we delete, and then post will send that to the. Uh, 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 so this this form that was being shown, maybe we should remove that one, maybe from that form. But it maybe. should be read only. Yeah, and uh, we can see that inside of this form we have an input field that is hidden with a name, ID, and a value. Uh, that is the ID, and that that that's the way we can can find out which uh, which one to delete. Delete post. Delete post that one and we find it by getting the request body.id and we delete mm. that item. Really not much more to it than that. And um, what we have shown here and, and what we can look in this this example is a, is a really simple just template and boilerplate and yeah. for creating a simple crude application without um, it's it is a pretty simple formula. I mean if you if you can do this simple to do list you can do Many mm -hmm. other things. Yes. Uh, this is not a complete picture. As you saw, there was a lot of other boilerplate code, like handling um, uh, error messages and things like that. Mm -hmm. It's and called and flash then, messages. Yes, and there are other aspects. Uh, if we got two models, mm -hmm. depending on each other, other, yeah. Well, we haven't it, discussed it, that it, either. Um, no. uh, That's a bit more complicated than. Yeah. But uh, that is for another day. Uh, we will, however, continue these demos or this lecture uh, with a second part. So uh, make sure that you look at that one as well. Then we will go into the flash messages and uh, session usage and things like that. So bye for now. Bye.